Right, well, here I am a day later, and I've done as much as I am keen to do for the moment on the climate control. The other bit I was keen to do is this. Now, this is a electro-hydraulic power steering pump out of a Mark II Focus. Uh, here in Australia, the Fiestas never came with uh, electric power assisted steering. They only came with um, belt driven pump hydraulic assisted steering. Um, in the European markets, they had a diesel version and the diesel version had uh, electric power steering, um, but that never made it here. So the one problem that we've got with the ST150s or in Australia, the XR4s um, from, you know, at least the ones we've got 2007, is the power steering pump. Lots of people actually put in a reservoir relocator because the reservoir is physically located on the pump and tends to boil the fluid. The fluid goes black, people don't like it. Uh, they have to fix it up. They put coolers in, all sorts of stuff. But one thing I wanted to try was the um, electric power steering pump. Now, the one thing from Ford, everybody uses the General Motors one uh, from the Opal. We've got a, over here, it's called the Holden Astra. Uh, it basically powers up without any need for any other signal. It's got a, a fail-safe mode, but the Ford won't turn on without CAN bus messages. So here we are. We're going to try the same thing. So we've got the same setup. I've got the, the sender to make sure that I can send messages. I've got, I didn't say it last time, but that's a receiver. It's basically sitting there monitoring uh, messages, uh, making sure that it can uh, get through. I've got the resistors on the CAN. So this time around, we're using the high-speed CAN bus and the resistors are a, a key for this one. Um, they're terminating resistors. I've just, just to show that in a bit more detail, all it is is, um, and one of my splitter cables is a little breakout. I've got high-speed CAN and medium-speed CAN terminators on there. They're usually meant to be 128, oh, sorry, 120 ohms on either end of the bus, but put them together and they'll form a 60 ohm. And then the modules tend to like that a little bit better. They, I don't know what it is about the signalling, but they need to see that 60 ohms in order to get on there and see the, the messages. Now, this pump is connected. Uh, first of all, I've been waiting for connectors to do this properly. I've got them sitting up in a box now, um, just about ready to go. But uh, to do this before, I got some 9mm spade connectors from a local electronic shops called JCAR. Got myself some good uh, gauge wires. Hook that up to my um, lab power supply, as well as um, one of these other connectors here. So um, this connector here is responsible. It's got two wires for you know the high-speed CAN pins and it's got a, a line there for ignition. Now you can see that's all turned on and nothing's happening on the pump, it's, it's off. Uh, and when I go to see the receiver, I can see that the pump is actually alive. That, that CAN ID 240, um, that's telling me that the pump is alive. There's some other bitwise values in these two bytes here. Uh, usually an error code is probably going to be talking about pressure and um, you know fluid levels and a few other bits and pieces. And this pump is likely to be constantly broadcasting errors because it's not currently running, um, or that it has no fluid in it. Now I've got a um, I don't know if you see that. I've got a power steering pump sitting down there. Um, I've got the 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 low pressure line, and once I pull that out with a bit of heat, I'll be able to put this up here. That's just the return line. I've got a focus uh, high pressure line coming, so I'll be able to hook that up. So the idea would be is that I could have this in a closed loop arrangement, have fluid in it, make sure it comes up. I uh, don't get so many errors, make sure the pump works. So um, one thing I already know, doing um, review of the CAN bus messages, is there's a message. Uh, let's see, let's do this one-handed copy and pasting again. Um, message 80, uh, I know, contains the values for road speed. Um, and it actually has the steering rate of change from the steering angle sensor because I've got the car with the um, uh, stability control. It's already got a steering angle sensor embedded in the clock spring or slash squib uh, in other markets. And... Um, it sends the message on the CAN bus, but for these pumps, they, well, whilst that gets used for the Fiesta pumps, they're only a two connector pump in Europe. So it's got a CAN bus line, power line, and there's no third connector. Um, the Focus pumps in Australia have a third connector, which is connected to a, um, a sensor on the Focus steering racks. Now that's so you could get 
power steering pump working on a car that did not have stability control. Um, but we know that stability control is on the Fiestas and the message is coming across. So there's a bit of lab work to do to determine whether or not I can actually get the pump to change speed based on rotational speed of the steering wheel. But we do know it will change rota rotation speed based on the, um, or pump speed based on the, uh, the road speed. Now I can simulate that through messages here. There's um, zero at zero. I think the 2710 is a, is a road speed. It's the sets that uh, at zero. That is a similar value to what gets read off the four ABS sensors. So when you're actually looking at a, another message, you can see that 2710 come off ABS sensors when they're not doing anything. There's one um, CAN ID that's responsible just for reporting the ABS sensor speed. Um, but this value, this uh, 080, is specifically for telling the power steering pump to work. Now, all Fiesta seem to have it. Um, so when you plug the power steering pump into the Fiesta, a focused power steering pump, that is, the, the power steering pump comes to life. So one of the messages in that whole stream of things can turn on the pump. So um, the idea is, is I want to put this in first. So now I want to go back and have a look at the messages being received. I can see that I've got stuff coming from the pump. It's 240 going to the pump from my sender is 080. Nothing's happening at the moment. Um, obviously, that wasn't the bit that triggered it. Now, my discovery for today... And here's where we're going to have some fun. Is which message was going to activate it? Uh, I've discovered this one. Um, 201. Now I've got a spreadsheet which I might be able to bring up. Uh, 201. I had done some uh, reverse engineering before. Let's see if I've got any data on it. Um, okay, it's another message from the PCM. It looks like it's giving engine RPM values, uh, RPM rate of change values, and there were some values off to the right that I, you know, when I've got question marks on there, I don't really know what they do, but um, I see some values change over time. So um, what I found though, if I start sending that message on the CAN bus, Apply. Let's see the third message. Goes into priming mode. I think at this stage it would have been trying to prime the fluids. And then we come up to speed. It'll probably go to full speed because I've got zero road speed coming out of my CAN bus messages. So the worry is, is that's running dry. Uh, and I don't know that that's a good thing for a pump. I've got another pump coming. This is always meant to be a lab pump. But we've got it working. Wow! Oh, hey! All right. That's brilliant. I'm very pleased with that. So I'll do some experimenting to see if I can control the speed of that. Like if I get the engine RPM up to, a, you know, road speed up to like 100 k's. There's a map um, that, you know, three-dimensional map that if you have low road speed you want high pump speed this is for parking in um, parking situations if you have high road speed you want the pump to be back down to idle because you don't want to have much assistance that's kind of what you want in a um, performance mode because you want the least amount of power steering drag possible when you're at high speed now that's the reverse of what happens you know cars that are drifting often go to these things but when you're racing your engine's high rpm your pump's going flat out you, you know cavitating your fluids causing all sorts of problems. So this is an ideal solution. So that is great. That that looks like it can plug straight into a Fiesta and work. So we yet to find out, like I said, what the implications are of that um, there. That's the steering rate of change sensor. So there's a, there's, a, there's a sensor that plugs into the steering rack on the Focus um, models, uh, Mark II Focus slash LS Focus. And it reports back um, via some kind of um, PWM, some pulsing, as to how fast the steering rate's turning. So that's really only relevant, I suppose, at high speeds when the pump's going low. Um, if you suddenly turn at high speed, you want the pump to raise assistance. I don't know if that's going to be a problem. I figured at low speed, it's still going to be providing assistance anyway. Um, it's probably some sort of critical emergency thing. Um, the question is whether or not it's got the smart, because we know that the CAN bus is already going to be sending um, the messages, whether or not it has the smarts in it to say, if I see those messages, I will use those instead. So maybe, maybe not. 
If not, I might have to find a way to use the uh, sensor from a focus and mount it somewhere on the rack inside the car. Um, according to diagrams, it's basically, it looks like six magnets uh, mounted on the steering rack. And this has a sensor that goes over those magnets and measures the pulses of the magnets as they go by. Anyway, that's what we think is going to happen. So a little bit of lab testing to go, but that is step one in the path to success as far as I'm concerned. Thank you very much.